another cup of Maxwell House coffee, George? Sure, pour me a cup, Gracie. You know, Maxwell House is always good to the last drop. That drop's good, too. Yes, it's Maxwell House coffee time, starring George Burns and Gracie Allen. With yours truly, Toby Reed, Mary Lee Robb, Ann Whitfield, Georgine Price, Gail Gordon, Harry Lubin and the Maxwell House Orchestra, and Bill Goodwin. For America's Thursday night comedy enjoyment, it's George and Gracie. And for America's everyday coffee drinking enjoyment, it's Maxwell House. Good to the last drop. Every now and then, Gracie gets the morning paper before George does. And then George is treated to an interpretation of current events that shouldn't happen to Drew Pearson. As we join the Burnses now, Gracie is reading and commenting on the news. See, look at this headline, George. It says that in West Virginia, four men held up a train. Oh, they must have been strong. <laughs> Gracie. Those you... trains are very heavy. Yes, yes. They're hard to lift. Yes. yes. Oh, listen to this. Alaska is going to become a state. And it says it'll be the biggest state in the Union. That's right. Alaska's even bigger than Texas. Wow. Yeah. When she comes in, we'll have 49 states. Now, Judge, we'll still have 48. How come? If Alaska is bigger, Texas will quit. <laughs> You, uh, you could be right, you know. Oh, now, here's something I don't believe. It says the Girl Scouts are celebrating their 37th birthday this week. You can believe that, Gracie. That's true. Really? Sure. Well, they certainly must teach those girls to take care of themselves. <laughs> you know, I, I have yet to see a Girl Scout who looks 37. Uh, Gracie... I, I think I'll join and learn how they do it. Uh, look, uh, the organization is 37 years old, not the girls. In fact, it's too late for you to join. They only take girls from 7 to 18. Oh, Don, it's missed it by a year. <laughs> yes, by a full year, yeah. See, maybe they'd let me join if I... Oh, no. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> wouldn't do what? Lie about my Oh, ass. no, no. <laughs> uh, how, how old do you claim to be? 19. 19, yes. And how many years have we been married? 15. 15. <laughs> Now, do you think people are going to believe that I married you when you were four? Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, I see yes, your you point. Think uh -huh. <laughs> well, I'll have to stop claiming I'm 19. You certainly. How old are you? 20. 20, 20. <laughs> Say, wait a minute. Maybe I could join the Girl Scouts as a leader. This article says that they need women to lead and train the girls. You don't know anything about that. I know all about it. I used to be one. A scout? No, a girl. Oh, <laughs> Yes. Well, look, Gracie, personally, I think associating with the Girl Scouts would do you a world of good. But you're no leader. I'm a natural-born leader. Why, in school, I never sat with other children. The teacher always put me up front of the class. Hmm. Did you have a pointed hat that you had to wear? You heard about me, Yeah. <laughs> Your fame spread. Yes. You know, I I've been a leader ever since I was just a little white-haired schoolgirl. Your hair was white when you went to school? Uh-huh. The teacher used to clean the blackboard erasers by beating them on my head. <laughs> that accounts for a few things. Now, forget about Girl Scouts. I'll see you later. Where are you going? I have an appointment to buy some life insurance. Another life insurance policy? Well, they haven't paid off your old one yet. Look, <laughs> you can't collect insurance until I'm dead. Goodbye, dear. Well, give me a kiss before you go. Okay. Hmm. I think I can collect that insurance. <laughs> Doctor, goodbye, dear. Well, I'll call Girl Scout headquarters and tell them I'm ready to be a leader. Come in. Mrs. Burns? Yes? We three girls have been sent here by Scout headquarters to accept your application to become a leader. I'm Bernice Carolyn Gallagher. I'm Peggy Martin. I'm Lil. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you. 
How old are you? Well, I'll be 16 on my next birthday, which comes in October. I was 12 last month. I'm 8. Well, come in, girls. I'll bet being scouts is lots of fun. Yes, and it teaches us how to become good and useful citizens. Yes, we're only girls today, but we'll be wives and mothers tomorrow. Oh, I'd wait longer than that. <laughs> What's this book you have? It's the Girl Scout Handbook, which contains the information you'll need in order to pass your test and become a Girl Scout leader. There's all kinds of things in this official handbook. It's for nuts. <laughs> well, let me see it. My, it does have a lot of things. Homemaking, health and safety, nature study, signaling. What kind of signaling? Well, um, did you ever see a wigwag? Oh, sure, every time Jack Benny shakes his head. <laughs> you say some funny things, Mrs. Burns. Oh, later, Bernice. Right now, I want to look through the book. Mm, I hope I can pass the test and become a Girl Scout leader. Oh, we'll be glad to help you in any way we can, Mrs. Burns. You're so much fun that we'd love to have you for a leader. Yes, you're one of the nicest ladies we've ever met. You're solid. Well, thank you. I've been exercising. <laughs> I'd love to have you help me. How about starting with first aid? All right. It'd be a lot easier if we had somebody to practice on. Somebody who'd let us bandage them. A sucker. <laughs> oh, say, a car just drove up in front. Maybe... Oh, gracious, look at that poor man who got out. He needs first aid. He must have been in an accident. He's a mess. Well, that's my husband. <laughs> well, he always looks like that. Oh... Um, he's a very interesting-looking man, Mrs. Burns. You can see he has a lot of charm and character. Yes, he looks like he has a wonderful personality. I still say he's a mess. <laughs> well, now, look, uh, maybe you girls are looking at the man who's driving the car. That's Bill Goodwin. He's, he's not as attractive as my husband. Oh, well, Mr. Goodwin seems to be a fine-looking gentleman. Yes, he looks very nice. She's only eight. <laughs> yes, Mrs. Burns. Well, now, girls, when my husband comes in, we'll practice our first aid on him. I'll go get the bandages and things ready. Shall we put him on a stretcher? No, let's just bandage him. It's too late to make him taller. <laughs> See you later, Bill. Thanks for driving me home. Oh, that's okay, George. How about some golf this afternoon? Can't make it today. I've uh, I've applied for some new insurance uh, for some new insurance, and the doctor's going to drop over and take a look at me. You got that backwards, George. He'll take a look at you and then drop over. <laughs> Always a comedian, huh, Willie? <laughs> well, I'm practicing for summer replacement. <laughs> Summer replacement. Yeah. Say, George, what kind of insurance are you taking out? Well, I've got a great little thing, Bill. If I don't work, it pays me every week. I know about Gracie. What kind of insurance are you taking out? Yeah. The summer is a long way off, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it'll do better on your own show, Bill. <laughs> it's a combination life and accident policy. The way Gracie keeps house, I'm liable to trip over something and hurt myself. Yeah, well, I guess she is a little careless about home safety. Well, the slogan of the National Safety Council is don't be aggressive. Mm. But, George, suppose you did fall and bump your head or cut your face. Uh, a few bandages wouldn't keep you from working on the radio. But, Bill, there's, uh, there's television. How, uh, how, uh, how would I look on television with bandages hiding my face? You want to withdraw that question, George? <laughs> that belongs to the summer routine. Yes, but, uh... <laughs> Yes, I'll withdraw. I'll also withdraw into the house. See you later, Willie. Go so on, George. <laughs> well, hello, dear. Oh, hello, Gracie. I... Say, where are the kids? Well, these are some lovely Girl Scouts who want me to be their leader. Girls, this is my husband. Hi. How do you do, Mr. Burns? Hello, girls. Do you still think that you can become a Girl Scout leader? Well, yes, I am. You're just in time to help. They're going to teach me first aid, and we'll practice on you. Wait a minute. Just a minute. Oh, now, you can't refuse the Girl Scouts a favor, George. Think of the times they helped you across the street. <laughs> well, I guess it would be a good idea for you to learn first aid, Gracie. Okay. Good. Now lie down, Mr. Burns, and pretend that you're unconscious. 
He's been hit by a truck, Mrs. Burns, and he's covered with cuts and bruises. He's also got a few sprains and fractures. Like I said before, he's a mess. <laughs> First. Well, see that he's lying in the proper position. Make sure that his head is level. Oh, it's very level. Almost flat. <laughs> I think you're pretty, too. No. <laughs> Quiet, George. You're unconscious. Oh, I forgot, yes. Now, let's say Mr. Burns has a broken arm. You take this large piece of cloth and fold it so that it has three corners, like this. Now, do you know what to do with it? Well, yes, but is George a little old for that? <laughs> George, how can you talk when you're unconscious? You should know you've been doing it for years. <laughs> get on with the bandaging. There, now I've used up all the tape in the gauze. Well, girls, how does my patient look? Like a mummy. Yes, Mrs. Burns, I'm afraid you've overdone it a little. He can't move. I don't think he can even breathe. Yeah, I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't move. <laughs> Why did you put the bandage across his mouth? Well, it says right in your handbook that an injured man should be kept quiet. That's the only way I could do it. Yeah, well, I can't move on. You've got to cut the law. Mm. Gee, I hope I'll pass my first aid test. Oh, wait, excuse me, girls. There's someone at the front door. Uh, Mrs. Burns? Yes? I'm Dr. Redler. The Fidelity Insurance Company asked me to drop by and see Mr. Burns. Oh, my goodness, Doctor. You must be having a hard time if you have to sell insurance on the side. I, uh, I'm not selling any insurance. Oh, can't make a go of that either, huh? <laughs> Mrs. Burns, I am here for one purpose only. No, oh, keep... but look, I'll make a bargain with you, Doctor. If you pass on my first aid test, I'll talk my husband into buying your insurance. If you'll only let me explain why I now, came come here. Now, come on, Doctor. Come in and examine my husband. We're there. I don't know how we got there, but we're there. <laughs> I would love to examine your husband. Oh, good. Now step right this way. Uh, George, dear, this is Dr. Redler from the Fidelity Insurance Company. He's going to examine you. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Stop. What happened to him? Well, we imagined he was hit by a truck, so I bandaged him up. Well... Trying to take out accident insurance after the accident, eh, Burn? <laughs> oh, he really hasn't been in an accident, Doctor. No, those bandages are only make believe. They're phony. So that's it. He's trying to collect on a fake claim. <laughs> well, thanks to these Girl Scouts, your fraud was detected. <laughs> Burns, after I report this, no insurance company in America will issue you a policy. <laughs> a good day. <gasps> well, George, I guess I passed the first aid test. My my bandages fooled the doctor. Oh, oh, look, girls, he's happy for me. Happy? Yes, he can't applaud a whistle, so he's pounding his head on the floor. Welcome musical promise of spring. Yes, and a number that's just as popular today as when it was written over 20 years ago. Why such lasting popularity? Because like all great music, this delightful song combines not one, but many fine musical parts. Show you what we mean. Here's another ever popular song in a seasonal mood. But see if you can recognize it from just this mellow harmony. We'll add the rich counter melody. We still need that vigorous rhythm. And to round out this great song, let's add the melody.
You see how it takes not just one, but many musical parts, all skillfully blended together to bring you this rich, ever-popular orchestration of Button Up Your Overcoat. And friends, it takes this same skill and blending to bring you the rich, heartwarming flavor of America's favorite brand of coffee, superb Maxwell House Coffee. Yes, there's a good reason why, on these blustery March mornings, you find so much extra enjoyment in that delicious, good-to-the-last-drop flavor of Maxwell House. You see, to create this famous flavor, our Maxwell House experts combine not one, but many choicest varieties of Highland-grown Latin American coffees. Now, first they select fine Manizales coffees for mellowness. For extra richness, they add metalins. Other choice coffees give the Maxwell House blend vigor. And finally, Bucaramanga's coffees contribute their fine full body. All perfectly blended into one great coffee, radiant roasted to flavor perfection. And brought to you vacuum packed, not just days fresh, but roaster fresh. And because you folks on the West Coast really know and enjoy coffee at its best, Maxwell House is blended and roasted for you right here on the West Coast to satisfy your critical taste. So, friends, why settle for anything but the best? Enjoy the extra flavor of America's favorite brand of coffee, delicious Maxwell House. Always good to the last drop. <laughs> The honest to goodness truth, Dr. Redler, I bandaged George up like that to practice Girl Scout first aid. I see. And the minute I got him unwrapped, he sent me right over here to your office to explain things. Now, can he have the insurance? Well, I'll still have to examine him before I decide that. Oh, well, uh, don't bother, Doctor. He, he's very healthy. A mass of muscle. Uh, of course, he does have a few teeth marks on him. Teeth marks? Well, the neighbor's dog jumped on him and knocked him down. Uh, vicious dog. The meanest chihuahua I ever saw. <laughs> uh, perhaps the dog had hydrophobia. Well, he didn't get it from George. He's very healthy. <laughs> How about it, Doctor? Will you give him the insurance? Mrs. Burns, there are certain things I must check. For example, his weight. Oh, well, I can tell you that. He weighs 150 strips. Uh, of course, that's just hearsay. I'm very bashful. <laughs> Will you let him have the insurance? Well, there are other things. I must make examinations of his heart, his kidneys, his lungs, and his liver, and send them to the insurance company. Well, won't that leave George awfully vacant? <laughs> I, I send the examinations, not the organs themselves. Oh! Uh, then I'll have to make a blood count. Uh, do you know what type of blood he has? Yes, it's sort of reddish. <laughs> I meant uh, type A or type B. Has he ever given any transfusion? Oh, sure. He, he's made uh, oh, he's made a dozen trips to the blood bank to give a pint of blood. Really? Yeah. Really? One more trip and they'll have the pint. <laughs> I think I'd better examine your house. <laughs> I'll try to drop by your house this evening on my way home. <laughs> You're wasting time, doctor. He's in the pink. Healthy as a bull. Well, I'll decide that, Mrs. Burns. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have an operation to perform at the Cedars. The Cedars? Oh, you're a tree surgeon, too. <laughs> well, goodbye and happy pruning. <laughs> well, I, I fixed everything up, George. You'll get the insurance, all right. Oh, good, good. Uh, and now I must get back to my Girl Scout work. Gracie, leave the Girl Scouts alone. They've been doing fine for 37 years. Why should I leave them alone? They'd like to try for 38. <laughs> but, George, they need leaders. I must heed the call of duty. Just as women have always done in time of need. You see. Did, did Joan of Arc hesitate? No, she got busy and built it. <laughs> built what? The Ark. <laughs> 
Nancy, a man built the ark. Oh, go on. The person who built the ark was a woman. Noah? How could I know her? She's been dead for years. I'd be nice on Bill Summer Show. Yeah. Uh, and just, just look through the pages of history. Whenever the world has needed something, it's always been a woman who stepped forward. It was even a woman who invented liquor. What, uh, what woman? Mary, Queen of Scotch. <laughs> I suppose some other woman invented beer. No, but if it weren't for a woman, you'd have nothing to drink it out of. Don't tell me, Gertrude Stein. Gertrude Stein. Yeah. <laughs> That's coming. So you see, George, I'm heeding the call of duty. Yes. The Girl Scouts need me. And as soon as Bernice and Peggy and Lil come back, I'm going to take them for a hike in the woods. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You can't take those children on a hike. Why not? You get lost when you go to the market. <laughs> well, don't worry. I won't take them to the market. <laughs> Gracie, you don't know anything about the woods. I'll bet that uh, you couldn't tell uh, rabbit's tracks from from uh, from bear tracks. Oh, Judge, don't be silly. Animals don't run on tracks. <laughs> Look, I can't let you get lost with those girls. I better go along and help you. We're old enough to get lost by ourselves. Yes, that's... Uh, come in. Here we are, Mrs. Burns, all ready to begin our expedition into the forest. Yes, we're anxious to get started. Let's hit the road. Uh... Look, girls, I can't let you go into the woods alone. My, uh, my husband thinks he better go along, girls. I insist on it. And if I don't go, Gracie doesn't go. Mm, let's have a conference, girls. <laughs> We've decided that it would be a great pleasure to have you accompany us, Mr. Burns. Yes, we'd love to have you. We're hooked. <laughs> Very well, I'll go get my book. Uh, come in. Well, hi, Burnses. Say, why the Girl Scouts? Well, I'm training to be their leader, Bill. Uh, the, this is Bernice, uh, Peggy, and Lil. Uh, girls, you remember Bill Goodwin? Oh, yes. Mrs. Burns pointed you out to us. How do you do? It's a pleasure to meet you. Hubba, hubba. <laughs> well, hello, girl. Uh, Gracie's taking them for a hike in the woods, Bill, and I'm going along for protection. Good idea, George. If they leave you here, something might happen to you. <laughs> Some more summer stuff, I guess. Uh, Bill. Yes. I'm going to protect them. You? Yeah, yes. he can do it, Bill. He's a regular Daniel Goon. <laughs> Daniel Boone. No, I like it her way better. Oh. <laughs> when George was a boy, he practically lived in the woods. Gracie, when George was a boy, everybody lived in the woods. <laughs> Listen, Bill. Without me, they'd get lost. They wouldn't know which direction to go. Well, they would if they took along Maxwell House coffee. Huh? There are directions on every can. Oh, no. no. Yes. It tells you how to make perfect coffee. Rich, delicious, mellow Maxwell House coffee. The most popular coffee in America. Gee, when Mr. Goodwin talks about Maxwell House coffee with that beautiful romantic voice of his, it's thrilling. Maxwell House is a combination of choice Latin American coffee. What a speaker. Expertly blended and radiant roasted to the very peak of flavor perfection. What a personality. Always good to, to the last drop. What a ham. <laughs> Bill, we love Maxwell House coffee, but it won't keep us from getting lost in the woods. Well, maybe not, but it'll make you stay there awfully pleasant. I see. Well, I'm not afraid of getting lost. The only thing that'd scare me is if we met a wolf. Yes, wolves are terrible. I hate wolves. Well, I guess I know when I'm not wanted. <laughs> Goodbye. Well, let's uh, let's get started on the hike, girls. <laughs> How do you think we've gone, Mr. Burns? About eight miles, Bernice. Eight miles? And look at George. He's as fresh as when we left home. Uh, sure. Well, this is far enough. Let's get out of the car and start hiking. <laughs> I'll park here. Boy, it's kind of hot here in the woods. Now watch, kids. I'll teach you an old woodsman's trick. You just grab a handful of these green leaves and rub them over your face. 
It cools you off. Mr. What? Burns, you shouldn't do that. It's a mistake. It won't cool you off. It's poison ivy. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Much further to go, girls. Let's jump across this little creek. I'll go first. <sighs> there. Now you, Bernice. That's fine. The Peggy. Got a girl. Come on, Lil. Good. Now you, George. <laughs> oh, don't sit in the water, dear. You'll frighten the fish. <laughs> goodness, we're almost back to the car. I'm completely exhausted. I'm awfully tired myself. I'm pooped. <laughs> come on, girls. Come on. It's only a little further. What are you dragging for? Well, George, it's not easy for us to carry you. <laughs> Keep moving. Morning, George. You're safe at home. Yeah, well, I'm all fine. I've got, I got one effect. I can't call. Well, I had to put the bandage across your face for the poison ivy. Girls, are you almost through? Yes, Mrs. Burns. I put both of his arms in slings to relieve his sprained wrist. I taped up the Charlie horse in his leg. I bandaged his chest. Well, you're the smallest, so you get the smallest job. Gee, he looks like a mummy again. Come in. Well, here I am, Mrs. Burns, ready to examine that healthy husband of yours. I've got a hard trouble, you see. <laughs> uh, still practicing first aid on him, eh? Well, I'll just take this bandage off his face so that I can see how... Good heaven! He looks like he's got smallpox. Well, you see what happened... Burns, you conniving scoundrel! Not only will I refuse you insurance, but I'll have this house quarantined. Good day! Gracie. Oh, uh, quick, girls. Put the bandage over his mouth again. Oh, what he's about to say, no girl scout should hear. George and Gracie will return in just a moment. Join us again next Thursday when we'll all be back. George Burns, Gracie Allen, Bill Goodwin, Harry Lubin, and the Maxwell House Orchestra, and yours truly, Toby Reed. And now, here are our stars. Gracie, next week our guest star will be that glamorous lady of the movies, Marlena Dietrich. Marlena Dietrich? She's the woman with the beautiful legs. That's the woman, yeah. Well, then I better save this bandage I have for your mouth. Why? Well, next week I'll put it over your eyes. <laughs> If I may be serious for a moment, uh, there are thousands of girls all over the country who are waiting to join the Girl Scouts, but they can't because there aren't enough leaders. Call your local council and wish the Girl Scouts happy birthday by becoming a Girl Scout volunteer. Nice going, Gracie. Good night, everybody. Good thing. Easy way. Do you like good things the easy way? Then get instant Maxwell House coffee. So good. So good. True coffee flavor and fragrance because Instant Maxwell House is not a so-called coffee product. It's all pure Maxwell House coffee in instant form. And so easy. So easy. Instant Maxwell House means great coffee instantly in your cup. No fuss, no muss, no bother. Today, try Instant Maxwell House. Instantly good to the last drop. Until next Thursday, when Marlena Dietrich will be our guest. Good night and good luck from the makers of Maxwell House, America's favorite brand of coffee. Always good to the last drop. The George Burns and Gracie Allen Show is written by Paul Henning and Keith Fowler. The preceding program was transcribed. And now, stay tuned in for Noah Webster Says, which follows immediately over most of these same stations. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.